One day I get a call from George Poveromo and he says, I want you as a guest on my show airing on the Discovery Channel and I want you to bring your wife. Without hesitation, I said, yes, let's do it. She would love to. But agreeing to bring her along, that's where I messed up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Life by the Bow. As you can see, today, we're in an entirely new boat. And we have an additional person. Yep. We have George Poveromo. Mm -hmm. And we had the pleasure of being invited onto his show. And at the same exact time, he told us that we could film a life by the bow. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know who George Poveromo is. He's a legend in the saltwater fishing industry. He's been filming TV shows for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And if you guys want to check his show out, it's on Discovery Channel. It's called George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. If you miss it on Discovery, you can always go back into his YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So what do you think for today? Well, I, I think you put a heck of a lot of pressure on me with that build up <laughs> <laughs> I had to, you know, I got to make it interesting. I'm telling you, that is a lot of pressure. So I, you know, it's going to be a good day. And you know, you're both from Key Largo. Well, I fished the Florida Keys a ton too. So between your knowledge, my knowledge. So I just think it's going to be a, a fun couple days here. And I uh, appreciate both of you coming on board. And it'll be very, very interesting. A little mix between broadcast television and then YouTube, what you do. That's sort of putting it all in the blender, you know? Yeah. Yes, sir. See, see what, how it turns out. Mm -hmm. No arguments for me. <laughs> cool. So the first line of business, like we were saying, we're gonna go try to catch some bait. We're in this big center console today, which is nice, because we're gonna be really comfortable. Lately, we've been fishing a lot out of the Pathfinder, so we're not too dialed in on the deep water bait spot, so we're gonna see how shallow we can get this boat. Hopefully, we don't scare George. Seems like they're on the surface right here. Yeah, kind of small. About to throw. Clay. Oh my gosh, we just blacked out. Did we? I don't know. I think I Christmas treat a little bit here, but oh, still... kind of, some of them are small. Yeah, we got yeah, a, a lot, lot of, of nice chummers here. Hopefully, there's some bigger ones in there. Yeah, it looks like there's a few towards the bottom. Oh my god, I can't pick this up. Yeah, I think so. He got it. Oh wow. Look. <laughs> looks like we're going tuna fishing. <laughs> so. Nice. Cool. So far, so good. We got our bait. We made it out to our destination, which is a local honey hole down here in Isla Mirada. This place is basically an underwater mound that comes up about 300 feet. The Gulf Stream current pushes up against the mound where the bait hangs out and what's not too far behind is the blackfin tuna. However, there's a challenge that presents itself as soon as you hook one of these fish and that is the sharks. The sharks here are ruthless, they're trained and they know exactly what's going on. As soon as you get a tuna boat side, that shark is hovering right beneath the boat and he comes in for his cut. So you gotta make sure to really put the pressure on these fish in order to make it past these sharks. And to be honest, we're not really even too sure if this is even gonna be possible today. So we just set up here and basically what we're doing is we just threw out a bunch of freebie baits. Those are just all free swimming behind the boat in the current and we're waiting for these tunas to come up and start busting. If we start to see them bust, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook our own baits on the hook, start free lining them back behind the boat, and the goal is, is to get those baits that we hook up inside of that tuna frenzy as they're coming up and busting on the surface. Everything has to kind of be perfect. You gotta have nice, healthy, fresh baits. You gotta make sure all your knots are perfectly tied, your hooks are perfectly tied, no chafes. Really pay attention to detail because that's gonna make the difference in the end when you really gotta put that pressure on a fish and get them away from a shark potentially. 
Yeah, and these sharks are smart out here. They'll go under the boat and just wait for you to bring up the tuna. So what I like to do is, is if I see a shark, I like to tighten the drag just a little bit once I'm close to the boat and then bring them on and then. Yeah, because it's better to break them off than have them get bit by a shark. Yeah, yeah. How's your bait? You, got still, you still got your bait? I think I'm going to put a new worm Go ahead. On. Get a new worm on that thing. Yeah, yeah I think I got picked up hey, and then she's got killed them. Uh, come over to this side, Stephanie, and Clay, no cheating. Make room for your wife. Don't okay. try to make her lose the fish. <laughs> Better get them now. I Have know, fun. we're fighting them on real light tackle. Yep. Good job, Stephanie. All See, right. that's why I always bring my wife fishing. I'm telling you. I can't catch them, but she always finds a way to do it. And you're always, I'm watching back there, you don't move the rod to let her come around there cleanly. You're always trying to interfere there, and I think yep. you have a little jealousy going on. Yeah, but you know, you know what it takes, though? <laughs> You know what it takes, George? What? A good captain. Ah, uh, don't get me in this fray. I don't get involved <laughs> in domestics. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm following the fish around the boat. I'm moving so wherever that, that line is, I want to stay directly on top of it. Hang on, just take your time. Whoop. Here we go. Get, get him, this get him. Say. <laughs> Woo! Awesome. That's Thank awesome. you. Good right. job, Stephanie. And that's the first tuna of the trip. And we've only been out here for about 10 minutes, so we're off to a great start. You know, one thing I've noticed already between you two, you talk about a competitive spirit. She <laughs> has you so <laughs> overgone, it's not even funny. That She's always got me. Uh, hey, don't take it personally. I really like her. She's got my <laughs> fighting spirit and fishing spirit there. George. So always about the most and the biggest and the best, right? That's right. George, I'd, <laughs> I'd rather have a wife that's better than me at fishing than have a wife that doesn't like to fish at all. So. Oh, well, that, 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 that's a valid point. <laughs> right. Oh, oh shark what just happened got to you? Him. All right, Shark's right behind the boat. Hurry, Steph. All right, so I'm going to put a little pressure on him. Yep, yeah. you may have to on this one, and I'll get the net for you. Either I'm gonna pull the hook or the shark's gonna get him. So yeah, either way. Yeah, just winch him in, Stephanie. Just in case it's a netter. There you go, good move. All right. Uh, no, we don't, there's, a, hey, there's no shark problem. Oh, I think I got him whole. Oh, I got a half. A, a half? Oh, I had to pay my taxes. Hey, I won the battle between the shark and the tuna because I ended up with more of the tuna than the shark did. Yeah, <laughs> right. that's still pretty lame, but you know what? You did it, and look at the positive. You don't have to bleed it now. I know, right? It's all yours. All right, thank have you. It. Yep. Hey, you can still get some meat out of that. Look at that. So today wasn't my day, and for whatever reason, the sharks preferred my tunas over Stephanie's, which really doesn't even bother me all that much because Honestly, I'd rather drive the boat than pull on a fish. So I told George, go ahead, fish the cockpit, I'll drive the boat, especially because I had a certain trick up my sleeve that I wanted to try. This doesn't always work, but some days when the sharks are really bad on top of the spot, what I like to do is I like to tend to drift a little further back. This is a way that you can bypass the sharks since the sharks are typically right on top of the spot where the tunas are. The only difference is when drifting a little further back off the spot, you're not as apt to catch a tuna, but if you do, the tuna will typically be bigger. So they put me on the bench. It's okay. I like driving the boat better anyway. <laughs> Catching fish is too much work. Mm. Who wants to catch fish? Like we say, the best fish are in Ziploc bags. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, we we're doing the same exact thing two weeks ago. Yeah. Zach, our cameraman, we let him fish because we were dumb. We caught a bunch of fish. Yeah. And he ended up catching like a 30 pound black. Oh, that is enormous for black. Same men. exact enormous. way we just did this. Wow. Got him? Of course I do. Woohoo! And you know what the bigger it's the bigger black thing. Woohoo! I knew it. I, I see it had that rhythm, everything going the right oh. way. And, Feels good to hold this guy right here. On the far back side of the hump, we're just clearing some line or whatever, yeah. talking about maybe doing our final one before you go to flutter style jigging and, and you nail it. And I think the sharks hit get us because <laughs> we're on the downside of the hump. Mm -hmm. So we got a break. Yeah. 
That's why you never give up. You always fish till the end. So we just switched gears here and um, decided to give the tunas a little break. These right here are called outriggers. Basically what we're doing is we're putting this line inside of this little release clip. And now that that's clipped in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this string. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull the bait away from the boat. That way we can fish multiple rods while trolling. And we don't have to worry about them tangling up. We got a five rod spread we're gonna put out. We're gonna do two outriggers, two flat lines right on the transom of the boat. And then George fishes a rigger that goes straight up. He basically just puts that bait out way, way behind the boat. And that's kind of like that last resort bait. So hopefully we come across something good, pick off a mahi. And yeah, that's basically what we're gonna focus on here for the rest of the day, just taking it easy trolling around and oh, see if we can catch something else. There it is. There it is. I put you up. I put you up to the strike. Nice. There you go. Nice. That looks like a keeper too. Go ahead, get in there. Nice job. All right. Now the only watch these other baits because it's gonna happen here. And a weed line was the ticket right there. Yes it is. What if we're trying to go land your wife's dolphin you think it's a flip, you can flip it in? Mm -hmm. gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> All right, that looks like a keeper. Yes, ma'am. Looks like a keeper from here. All right, yep. they have to be 20 to hug. the fork of the tail. Here. Mahi okay. love hugs. Look at that little bowl, right? Yep. Yes, it is. Got the tuna and the mahi. Safe to say, we're not going hungry. Sweet. So these are some weedless ballyhoos that George rigged up here. It's awesome because you can troll them right through the weeds. That hook just kind of sits right up there inside of the ballyhoo. Got a little skirt up front. That way when you have those days where there's just weeds everywhere, you don't have to worry about it. Get another one on. Nice. I don't know what it is. That's got a oh. lot of weight. George is hooked up right now. Yeah. we've been waiting on. <gasps> I, try, I see him trying to break yeah, the Yeah, I surface. see green. Do you yep. see green? Yes, I do. Do we have Oh, Yo, all right, good. Let's see if he is. has any followers. Nice. The other baits are in play. There you go. Okay, I'm kind of just idling right Which now. Perfect. You're doing a super job. You got the other baits in play. Awesome. Fishing like the pro you are. You know the game. If that's what you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny, George, is you're you're talking this morning, I think when we were in about 400 feet, about all the bait there was, right? Flying fish. And yeah, and sure enough, we came back to 400 feet in the afternoon, like you're saying, and then that's where we've been scoring these two mahi, right? Yep, flying fish, you see a lot of flyers in the zone, you know those mahi are here eating on them, and, and you have weeds, you have flyers, you stick it out, they should be here. All right, you gonna do the honors? Go, sir, Steph, do the honors. All right, all Steph, right. it's all up to you. In the head? Anywhere you can get it, how about that? It's all right. even easier instruction. So what we're doing right now is oh, we're well, keeping the boat right in gear. You might get your shot. So that way we keep that line as tight as possible. We don't want that fish to change direction too much because that's where we might pull that hook. It's a good size mahi. There you go. All right, bring him over, bring him over. Woo good job, You Stephanie. are good, Stephanie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a there good we go. size. I'm going to pull him out. There you go. Hey, you got him in the boat too. That's right. I'll be brutally honest with you. When I saw you reach over the gap, I held my breath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you never know. You never. You never, never know. know until you know. George, that's a good looking box right there. That is. Wow, well, it's definitely contributed to most of it in that box. <laughs> yeah, that I know. I know. <laughs> you got to bring her on every fishing trip. Yeah. Well, Steffi, I've got to ask you. Mm -hmm. I know that Columbia de decorate your with their clothes. What size shoe do you wear? I wear an eight. That's just the right size to walk up to the cooler and bring another weedless value back here. All right. right? <laughs> I got it. I'll, I'm I on it. I that joke for all 23 years on TV. I, I was like, no one laughs yet. <laughs> I laugh. I was wondering where he was <laughs> going with it. I was like, size shoe. Hmm. <laughs> hey guys, excellent sequence right there, bud. Nice. Excellent. 
At this point, it's around 12 o'clock and we have caught plenty of fish. Plus, the offshore bite tends to turn off around this time, so we decided to switch gears and see how many species we can actually fit into the show. So far, we've got the tunas, we've got the mahi. Now we're gonna try the edge of the reef, see if we can maybe catch a kingfish, mutton snapper, and who knows, maybe even jump in the water and see if we can catch a lobster. That's the mutton right there. I'm loving it. It definitely has to be the mutton. Nice, Steph. Good job. I'm gonna come hang. I'm gonna hang with you because when you hook fish, it actually takes line off the reel. <laughs> <laughs> I think it could be. All right, you had what? Your light pilchard or light pinfish? What'd you put on it? I put a pilchard. Yep. And you talked to me. You felt that the 10 ounce wasn't really holding well, so we added some more. So it was the feel thing for you. And now all of a sudden, we got you right where you could feel exactly what's happening. You hook up. That's right. All right here comes the sinker. Uh, you hold this if you would. Yep, let me open my bail. What is it? Mutton. Looks there like a is. mutton. Woo there it is. Oh, nice. look at that. Good job, Stephanie. Well, let's bring it down here. We got the uh, tail of the tape. Make sure it's legal. That's right. We got to be All empty. right. Yeah, I'll take the hook out. Let's see. Ah, oh, he's short. Coming is up he? short? Yeah. 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 Well, it doesn't matter that the fish was undersized because Stephanie is already hooked up again. And it's funny the way that the world works sometimes because I cannot catch a fish for the life of me. And to make matters worse, we have George, we have the production crew, we have our cameraman, we have the captain of the camera boat all watching me get my butt whooped by my wife. And just when you think things couldn't get any worse for me, then this happens. Do you guys want to keep them or throw them back? What do you want to do with them, George? Sushi. He's got right. a great ceviche. All right, we're going to put it. him in this the box. This guy's still moving. Let me. Oh, Clay, grab him. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I'm not even looking what's going on outside of the, the oh. boat. Do, do, do. do. Uh, and there we go. Oh, All right, so my how, let's, goodness. Where, where do we start with the ball confusion? So, kind of wrapped it up as far as offshore fishing today. Got a decent number of tunas, some mahi, no thanks to me, but thank <laughs> God George and Stephanie are on the boat. But um, what we want to do is we want to hop in, get some lobster for the show, which will be really cool. Something we do a lot right off of our house here in the Keys. And uh, what George is going to do, he's just going to idle around on the boat and Stephanie and I, we're going to get in there. This is my time to catch up to you. Yeah, well, you better catch up because you're far behind. Oh, well, like I said, I got all you beat on the pilchards this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> See who gets it first. So at this point, I am determined because I haven't caught anything all day. As you can see, the water was pretty murky, but it didn't stop me from finding this guy right here, and he was a beast. I tried to get him on the tickle stick right here, but what ended up happening was, is I started reaching my hand in, and he turned right around and basically backed right up into my hand. So at that point, the deal was done, raised up to the surface, and we kind of decided that we only wanted one lobster strictly just for dinner, just because we had so much tuna and mahi that was already in the box. I was trying to get him on the stair, but he just swam right into my head. George with the assist. heavy basket. It's a good thing too. I was about to say it's a good problem to have right there. And it's just crazy. Like I was saying earlier, everything that we wanted to happen today happened. We got our mahi, we got our tuna, lobster. 
Of course, had to deal with the sharks, but today was definitely one of those better days that we've had. Skin peels right off like that. So you don't need any special skills in order to remove the skin from the meat. And obviously, once you're at this point, just run that knife down the backbone. And the key is, is just to work around that. And then once we get around that round part, we can use the flex and the knife here to run along the back side of that fish real nice and easy. One of my biggest things is, is I try not to touch that stomach. I'm gonna clean that up. And that right there is dinner. Cut out the ribs, the bloodline. It's about as fresh and as good as it gets. Now, it's safe to say at the beginning of the video, I was totally kidding. And to be quite honest, it's a blessing to have a wife that loves to fish and not to mention is actually really good at it. Ultimately, we all play different roles on the boat today in order to make a successful show. And I would have to say this one's gonna be a hit. Also, when the time comes, we're gonna link his version of the show down in the video description below. But what we did, so we went ahead, got cleaned up, and we headed over to Snook's Bayside where they prepared all of our catches. And I have to say, it was very impressive. We're already full from all the appetizer, but got some mahi, got some lobster on top. I'm gonna try a little piece. Try it. That's delicious. But this is it right here, man. It's about as good as it gets. Dinner is beautiful. George, thank you so much for hosting us, having us, having us be a part. Absolutely everything going on. Rob, it was a pleasure. Stephanie, way to show me up. <laughs> show us all how it's done. But until next week, see you guys then. Thanks so much.